Hi everyone, I'm Lisa from Down to Earth Gardening and Design. Welcome to our video today, which is an easy way to prune or cut back your aster to set it up for the best success. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about perennial asters and the one in front of me here. Um, and I'm just gonna briefly tell you a little bit about this garden, what I have going on down here. And I wanna talk about the easiest way to cut it back. So perennial aster, this is a New England aster. And when it comes to particular varieties, there are so many. They come in lavender, purple, blue, white, pink. Um, but I'm not quite sure the particular variety of this one. So I can tell you it's a New England aster. It, you've probably seen this in our roadside garden uh, spruce up video, which we posted last fall. And I hadn't had the chance to cut this one back. So you can see it in the fall and how tall it gets. It probably gets to be about four feet tall. Um, aster, New England asters can get anywhere from three to six feet tall. So it's a really great idea to try to control the shape and the height of these asters. And I'm gonna show you an easy way to do it. So there's some different reasons why we prune our perennial asters. And one is of course deadheading them. So to get more blooms and we're not quite there yet. Two is for health, which you do always wanna think about. You wanna make sure that you thin them out if you have the chance and they'll get more air circulation. So that will help prevent mildew and they'll also get a little more sun exposure because they love their full sun. Um, and then the last reason is what we're talking about today, controlling the height and the shape of your aster. So we do this frequently with plants when they start taking over the garden and taking up too much space and uh, kind of crowding some other things out. But in the video, the roadside garden video from last year, you can see how tall it got and it actually started to splay. So it didn't have a great shape. And in fact, I almost nixed it. But I love New England asters because they are a native plant. So native perennials and shrubs for that matter and trees are wonderful because they can withstand some pretty harsh conditions and they don't require a lot of maintenance. And the bees, the pollinators, the hummingbird, they love the asters. So um, I think they're a win-win. And then lastly, they're deer, rabbit, rodent resistant. So what's not to love about these beauties? So simple trick today, and all you're gonna need for tools is you're gonna need your garden shears. Um, pruners would be handy as well. And then of course I just have my little trug and my wagon to collect any debris. So the hot tip about what we're doing today is you wanna get to these and do this before mid-June. So anywhere from mid-May to mid-June, you can cut them back to set them up for success and make them mounded and bushy like they really should be. Um, and you can take off, hot tip number two, anywhere from a third to a half. And I have three of them down here. I've already uh, done one down at the end here. So I'm going to walk you through how I'm gonna do this one here. So you can see it's quite full and the asters, they flower late summer or early fall. So you don't want to do this when it's already got the buds on it. And um, it has beautiful leaves, very lush and woody stems, a nice branching habit. So by cutting them back, you are also going to get bigger and more blooms because it's going to encourage them to branch out and fill out a little bit. So I'm gonna be pretty generous in cutting these down. And you can see I've already cut the one on the end down. And I'm going to probably be taking half off of mine here. So you don't have to hit every stem if you like a little bit of a natural look. So there's some shorter stems here and you can kind of shear it around them so when I'm working and I'm mounting a shrub, a shrub, I will flip my shears over. So there's another hot gardening tip for you here. Just kind of turn them around and will help you curve the outer edge a little bit to give it that more mounded 
appearance that we're looking for. So now that I've sheared it, I want to just clean up a little of the debris that's in the plant here. Just kind of comb it out a little bit. And then I can shape it a little more. And so when I'm doing this, I'm essentially thinning it as well. So I'm shaping and thinning with my hand pruners here. Okay, and I'm just gonna do a quick cleanup so I can really stand back and have a look, see if it needs any touch-ups here. Okay, if you want to get really technical about when you're thinning it, it's best if you can cut your stem down um, right above a set of leaves here. So this is ideal. But today we're doing the quick and easy way to do this. We have a lot of gardening tasks. It's spring. There's so much to do in the garden. So um, I'm just giving you a glimpse at what I do and I will do a follow up in the fall to see how these beauties turn out. But what I also wanna say about this garden down here is I feel like the native asters are a wonderful addition, not only because they are so low maintenance, but also I think they make a really nice addition to an informal garden. So this is full sun and the asters love their full sun, although they aren't uh, too fussy being a native plant. And it doesn't get a lot of care. It's pretty far away from the house, but I have this in combination with some grasses, some Russian sage, um, and some echinacea, and a few other things. So like I said, we did the full length video on this garden and what we added. If you want a plant list, um, you could probably follow up on that video there. But these asters are a purple blue. And I want to say, if I had to guess, that it's purple dome. The thing that's tricking me is that they get so tall um, and purple dome is supposed to be about two to three feet. That's what it maxes out at in its height. So it's a little bit shorter than this one here, but I think it's pretty similar in flower if you wanna check that out. And I am actually gonna pick some of those up for another area in my yard because I love these so much. I love the color and I love the fact that they give a nice pop the end of summer and through fall. They're a pretty long bloomer too. So this here is not only going to help the health, but it's really going to help them shine. It's going to be nice and bushy and the rest of the flowers are going to be able to show off a little bit more. So I hope my tip helped you today and I really appreciate all of you at home watching. I love doing these videos for you and if you liked it, please go ahead and give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel because we're doing a lot of gardening here. 